welcome to From the Top, where we talk to the leaders of the aerospace industry. And I don't think you can get more of a leader than this one. I'm welcoming Guillaume Foray, the CEO of Airbus. Delighted to have you with us on the programme. Does it feel positive to you? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, thank you, Alan, for that. Um, well, that's the beginning of the recovery. We are not yet there when it comes to being back to 2019 uh, traffic. Uh, but it's good to be here. So uh, we were on a path uh, of growth before we were hit by the pandemic, like uh, everybody. I think the industry as a whole has been very resilient and uh, we've worked really together to make sure we would uh, survive this crisis um, all together. So a lot of work with um, customers, with suppliers, and the supply chain is really uh, stressed by, uh, by this, um, this crisis. And also a lot of work inside the company to make this possible, and I think employees of Airbus are very proud of what they have, uh, what they have uh, accomplished together. I guess that must be a concern though at the moment with the supply chain being stressed mm -hmm. as it is. Um, I know you've been talking about increasing production for the A320 line to 70, 75 or whatever. There's some Not pushback, yet. I think, mm -hmm. coming from some of the suppliers. How hard is it going to be to be able to reach your own potential because of the supply chain? Um, you know, we're, for the moment, trying to go back to rate 65 on the single aisle, and that's the rate we had when we were hit by COVID-19 uh, beginning of last year. So the, the physical production system is already in place, and it's about going back to this rate, and we want to be at rate 65 again by mid of 2023. And the supply chain is very committed, because it's an opportunity for everybody to be back where we were in 2019. Now, we want to go beyond rate 65. We see a very strong demand supported by the backlog, but also the recent orders we had uh, here at the show in Dubai. So we think we will have to go to 70 or 75. We have asked the supply chain to assess uh, what it means, what it would mean. Um, what I'd like to ask you now is about the big issue for aviation. Uh, I uh, IATA, ICAO, ARCO, mm -hmm has been sustainability. Now you've actually been one of those really driving at sustainability, mm. but is this just a leadership words or is it truly attainable? With you, there's mm. targets out there, leadership targets that we talk about, mm. but will we actually achieve them? Um, will we achieve them as a planet and with all the industries? I don't know. I, I'd like to speak about aviation. And when it comes to aviation, uh, we truly believe in the need to connect people around the world. Uh, that's absolutely essential to uh, many regions of the world that live um, on tourism and, and on exchange. Uh, trade is very important, it's part of human society now, but also connecting people and to make sure people can live in peace together on this planet. So we, we really believe in the role of aviation and we think it would not make sense to um, go backwards when it comes to uh, connecting people around the world. But at the same time, we fully recognize that the global warming is probably the first global challenge to humanity, and we want to be part of the solution. So we have to go there. So we are completely, um, we are believers in the fact that we have to be fast, that each and every ton of carbon that is put in, in the air today uh, will contribute to global warming. So there is urgency. Uh, but we see solutions. And the more we work, the more solutions we see. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, it's about the planes, it's about the fuels, and the energy sector has to back us, uh, but also about the level playing field in terms of regulations that need to be created. Uh, but at Airbus, we really believe we have solutions to put into service uh, based on existing planes that are very competitive when it comes to uh, carbon emissions, much better than the old planes, and only 13% of the fleet uh, is composed of modern planes with uh, low fuel burn. Uh, on the fact that we can grow the use of sustainable aviation fuels, very limited use today uh, in operations, where 50% is what we can do every day um, in terms of mix, 50% of SAF in the mix on all the planes we are delivering every day. And we want to go hydrogen. Why do we want to go hydrogen? Because it's feasible, it's possible, it's a lot of engineering work for sure, that's what we're doing now. Uh, but hydrogen is the only way to have a fuel on board that doesn't put carbon in the air uh, in combustion or when being used on board. So we are working on all those, uh, those paths and uh, we, we're trying to be as fast as we can and we're very happy to see the momentum growing. We had recently the Airbus Summit in Toulouse, a lot of people joining, 
because I think everybody that is believing in aviation wants to be part of that success, of that story. So there you talked about <coughs> Net Zero to 2035, have an aircraft ready by 2035. Still on target with that? Yeah, idea. sure, sure. We want to have a first hydrogen plane um, hitting the market in 2035. Why 2035? Because we have started the development of the technologies uh, two years ago. We think you need roughly five years to mature those technologies. They are based on existing things and we don't need to reinvent the laws of physics. Uh, we're using technologies that are applied in other sectors. We're just developing those technologies for aviation. Then we will need two years to prepare the launch of a program, finding the partners, uh, the location for the plants and preparing the uh, industrial system that, that we need, uh, preparing contracts, uh, funding of these big investments. So 2027, 2028 will be ready to uh, launch the program and then it takes to 2035 to be certified and enter into service. So the credibility of uh, this time frame is very strong and we continue to, to make progress. So I remain very optimistic that uh, we're going to make it. And the supply of that, you're getting involved in, in the plants that are going to to work on hydrogen, for example, and also public acceptance. We know there's often a problem trying to persuade the public that this is a good idea. I guess we know hydrogen is safe. How do we tell the public that? Mm. Well, we will have to uh, give evidences of it. Today, uh, hydrogen is not used as a fuel, so the public is not used to it. We are not used to it, uh, but we're flying planes every day uh, with kerosene on board. And, and kerosene is also a, a fuel. So that's part of the process we have to go through. I will go through experimentation, test, validation, certification, um, and, and going through the experience, I think we'll be able to share, to demonstrate, and the confidence will come. And we see hydrogen coming to the car industry. Uh, it's gaseous hydrogen, but it's going to come as well. It's going to come to the uh, railway industry, uh, to other industries before it goes to aviation. So I think the public will get used to it. And another area that the public may find it difficult to accept at the moment, urban air transport. And, and you're very much involved in that as well. When do you think we're going to see that Airbus, the city Airbus, coming alive? Mm. So at Airbus, we believe there will be a market for these uh, air taxis. Um, that are decarbonized and therefore by far more compatible um, uh, with the use of, of um, flying objects um, downtown in cities. There is a need, given the congestion that we see um, in, in those uh, urban centers and 60% of the population uh, soon to live um, uh, in cities. Uh, so the technologies um, are arriving. Uh, still, um, as it has to be flown on batteries and the energy density of batteries rather small compared to the needs of flight, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, that's what we are contributing to. Many other players do it as well. But at Airbus, we also like the idea that those technologies uh, can be experimented on those rather small products quickly. Um, we can fail fast, uh, learn from it, try again different solutions. And when this will be successful, we can scale it up to other products and in particular to commercial aviation. So we see the, the, the two benefits of working on those technologies. When Maybe 2025, 2026, 2027, we will be the first one uh, flying commercially. And I'm sure we will be flying those products um, in our lifetime.